Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for some Esper taking turns. So we're going to continue on with our ranked matches that we started at the beginning of the week. Uh, this is Wednesday now. On Monday we started at the very end of gold and we got through gold and uh, on to platinum. We are now on platinum two after our two days and so that's where we're at right now. So we're pretty close to getting through platinum. Just got to win, I think, five more matches. But, of course, every loss knocks us down a peg and everything like that. So we're going to start off the stream here today with Esper taking turns. This is a, a pretty strong deck uh, that I think is is kind of underrated. It's, it's basically Esper Control that has a really good late game uh, finisher. Our late game finisher, of course, are the four... Karn's Temporal Sunderings and for Nexus of Fates, there are the extra turn spells where we just try to, all we're trying to do is untap with one of our Planeswalkers, just untap with a Karn or a Teferi, and then take all the rest of the turns in the game after that. So Esper Control does a good job of, just like normal Esper Control, does a good job of killing creatures with Kaya's Wrath and, and you know, playing defense, basically. And if you think about, like, the like Bant Nexus deck, it does a, you know, Bant Nexus, once it sets up like at the late game, it just takes over and, and you know, ends the games uh, if you don't kill it within a certain amount of time. So this deck kind of combines those two shells where we're playing Esper Control so we can have a good early game and we have our Kaya's Wraths and removal with Cast Down um, where we just try to, you know, slow down the opponent just long enough where we can play our Planeswalker, untap, and then take over. You know, Esper Control can, like, play Teferi and, you know, untap and take a couple of turns. But if the, if the Teferi gets removed, you know, it has to keep on answering everything the opponent has for, like, forever. And we've seen that with, like, Hydroid Crisis, uh, where Sultai gets to keep refilling and everything. And, and it's hard to, like, keep down Vivian after a while and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, this deck doesn't really care about those cards after a little bit. All you have to do is, like, untap with your Planeswalkers and then start taking all the turns um, after that. Hey, King Tull, good Good evening. So that's what we're doing here. So it's it's an Esper Control deck that has a basically a lot better win condition than normal Esper Control because uh, it's not just like having to protect Teferi after turn after turn after turn after turn and you know try to thwart every single card your opponent has. This you just use these to start taking all the turns after a little bit. So uh, that's what we got going on here. Uh, the new card that we, we played this deck a, a couple months ago, like on stream. I haven't played it a ton on stream uh, since then, because I know it's not everybody's favorite deck, because not everybody likes Esper Control, and not everybody likes taking lots of turns. Um, but I hadn't been using Revitalize, and the last time that I played this off stream, I was playing it with Revitalize and really liked this addition. This uh, Revitalize just helped you stay alive long enough, because that's, you know, that's certainly uh, a problem, is staying alive long enough in this helped with that that extra little bit of life was really nice so that's what we're gonna do so we are uh platinum tier two right now let's see if we can get out of platinum today we're gonna be playing esper taking turns as you see here and then naya legends after this and then we'll finish up with grixis discard looks like grixis discard i'm finish up with that one looks like that's our like for the most part, people's favorite deck. Um, have a whole lot of YouTube vi views with that one comparatively to the other decks that we've played over the last couple of days. It looks to be everybody's favorite deck, so we're going to be finishing up with that. It's also one of my favorite decks, too, so no surprise there. Yeah, Oath of Kaya would be great for this deck. Absolutely. Yeah, Oath of Kaya would be really, really nice to have. That card's just strong. That's really strong. DJM, your resub didn't pop up. Try try refreshing your stream, DJM. And then there should be like a, a button to send your resub up at, at the top of the chat. All right, really good start. We got these thought erasures. <laughs> yeah, we're almost almost there. We are eight days away. Yeah, eight days away from playing War of the Spark here on arena all right so it looks like is it drake's um so do i want as in play or do i want to start thought erasuring 
I think I want to ask Kanta in play. I guess, so if it's like Crackling Drake on turn four, I have turn, I guess I have this turn and then the next turn to get the two Thought Ragers to take like multiple Crackling Drakes. So there's one, we can take one. I'll just get rid of this next, I'll just shuffle that next to Fate back in for now. And now we can take another Crackling Drake. Oh, no, just a couple shocks. <laughs> this Nexus of Fate's like, pick me, pick me. Card in particular is really good with Nexus of Fate because card lets you dig so far. You know, you get to dig two cards a turn and you get to really, um, really clear out your library very quickly with the help of Karn. I will fight with honor. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure we, we actually choice. shuffled this Nexus back at all. <laughs> it doesn't seem like we ever actually shuffled the Nexus back. Because when you're playing a Nexus deck, you want to thin your deck uh, to the point like where you're just only finding Nexuses. <clears throat> so they could have, they could be Phoenix, which Cry of the Carnarium is great against Phoenix. If they're not Phoenix, Cry of the Car Carnarium is not great. So it's, I'm not sure if they're going to be Phoenix or just Drakes. We didn't see any, we didn't see any of the cards that like were, uh, that were saying that it was Phoenix. You know, we didn't see like Goblin Electromancer or um, Radical Idea or anything like that. Yeah, you think it's Drake's? The the Black Source is kind of pointing me towards Drake's also. Which Drake's would probably want these Mortifies. Probably want enough removal. I think... The three life is probably not as necessary. And do I want negates to protect? I mean, I guess I would just use duress to protect my own spells. I'm going to take out one Karn Temporal Sundering. Karn Temporal Sundering is a, a card that I take out a little bit. Yeah, Lyra is okay. I mean, Lyra blo does block and everything. I don't know if it's really that necessary, though. The problem with Lyra against Drakes is, like, they have a dive down, and then, you know, you block and your Lyra's gone. It's not like we're, we're not going to really be attacking here anyway. Ooh, I'm going first? That's interesting. All right, two Crackling Drakes and Niv-Mizzet. I'll just take one of the Crackling Drakes for now. We have a cast down for the other. Don't have anything for Niv-Mizzet yet, but we'll find something. I mean, I could I could attack Discovery Charter Course there, but they still have the other one. Like, if I take a Discovery or a Charter Course, they have the other one. And these Crackling Drakes are pretty annoying because they are, you know, like, must kill and they replace themselves. And that, that's an annoying combination. So they didn't play Charter Course here. So I guess our opponent has Negate. I'm going to play as Kanta into the negate instead of the Karn. It is possible they have Disdainful Stroke. <laughs> yeah, 
And this does let, let us just cast this cast down right now. Also, and untap with Karn. So that worked out quite well. Hmm. I mean, Kaiserath is an answer to that Niv Mizza that's coming down in a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. The evil must not be tolerated. Pretty glad we got that land. Because, you know, we want to hit our land drops to get up to Nexus of Fate here. They have a lot of cards over there. They have they have the blink of an eye too that can bounce the Karn. Like if they have negate, they can like blink, bounce the Karn, and then hold negate up. So it looks like that's what they're doing. Hmm. Pain ledge. All right, so certainly think that they have. And this is the other good thing of not boarding in Lyra is the the beacon bolt is blinked. So you know, certainly think they have the counter spell. So we're going to have the, the Nexus of Fate um, on end step and throw that out there. And if that doesn't get countered, we have multiple turns. Ooh, so they are a Phoenix deck. That's annoying. That is certainly annoying. I don't have... A great answer for Arclight Phoenix. All right, let's let's continue to work towards flipping this as Kanta. Do I want to just cast the Nexus, or do I want to wait till their turn? I think I'll just wait till their turn. Yeah, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, let's cast the Karn. Because actually, this could be really bad. I do need to get this Counterspell out of their hand. Because, come to think of it, if I don't... If they just get to play Niv Mizzet with Counterspell backup, that's a huge problem. We hadn't seen any counters from them previously, but that was. They're certainly telling us they had a counter spell in hand. Hmm. 
Thought Rage is a good draw. Mission Briefing, Opt, and Terramander. Um... So we'll take the mission briefing. Because that that can cast another negate. Mission briefing also gets the Arc Light Phoenix back. Pretty easily. No, no counter spell there. That's good. And I didn't flip Ascanta because then we just get we get another use out of, out of Ascanta this turn. Ooh, that's what I want to see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we cannot play Teferi and Let's see if this eats a counter spell. So, I'm guessing they want to wait on their opt to try to bring back Phoenix. So that's why they're struggling with, you know, seeing if because they can opt to look for a counter spell, or they can wait for it to help bring back Phoenix. Ah, uh, poor Gideon. So Gideon, ah, uh, poor Gideon. I liked Gideon. They put that card on top, whatever that card was. That's probably bad for me. If you show remorse, no time for a break. Yeah, I really like the Elder Spell. That's a really well designed card. I think mean, that's that's really flavorful and everything and Yeah, I think it was I think it was really really well designed. Alright, well that's that's quite bad. I won't let you win. You know what? I'm not done yet. Hmm. Or ditch two Kai's Wraths. This is difficult. So I could play like new Teferi, Tuck Niv Mizzet, but then but then my Teferi dies to Phoenix. And they can kind of find it back. I can just activate as Kanta and look for Kaya's Wrath. Um, I could just cast Next to Fate that lets them draw a card and ping the the Teferi. I think I want to do that. That lets me draw two more cards. Oh my gosh, they did they just pinged me, they didn't ping Teferi. Well that's great. So we can uh, wait. Yeah, so we tuck that thing. You need to slow down. play both of these. 
Our actions good choice. I can no longer. We need to move quickly. All right, we'll see if our opponent can kill us or not. We'll see if our opponent can kill us. We know they have a, a niv mizzet in a couple of cards, which doesn't really hurt us too bad. They have one phoenix in the graveyard. If they get that phoenix back out... Oh, that's kind of bad. Oh, they just went to combat. All right, so they can kill one of the planeswalkers, but that's not killing us. Our opponent could have maybe tried to get their other phoenix out. And kill us. Like, they could have cast Radical Idea. Um, three mana cast Beacon Bolt and kill something. And, you know, see if they just draw a spell. One of those other ones. So, do they have a counter spell? Basically, we're going to win this game if they don't counter my Karn's Temporal Sundering. If they do counter the Karn's Temporal Sundering, we likely lose. Ooh, Thought Erasure is nice. That's a good one. Well, let's see what let's see what this brings us. Hurry! I guess I should just Thought Erasure first before ticking up to Fairy, because maybe we need a Tuck. Um... Going risky. Well Just thin in the deck. Whew. So we're just hoping that their card off from Radical Idea is not... Okay, they're not even ditching a card with Radical Idea. This, as long as, as long as they don't counter anything, you know, like they'd have to use this the radical idea and find a counter spell. As long as they don't, we're gonna have this. Keep up the pace. And always. Getting the Nexus of Fate back in the graveyard first before doing other things. And end step will activate Escanta. Draw our card. Hold that thought. No, no, you, you want to cast your Nexus of Fates first because they go back into the, the library. You want to cast those before Temporal Sundering. The choice is Nexus the is the first card you, you just get out of the deck. We, be, or you cast because it, it just goes back and you have chances to, to draw them again. Where once you cast a Temporal Sundering, it's gone for good. You don't have the chance to cast it again. Yeah, this one's over now. I mean, it's not over, over. Like, if they Radical Idea and draw a Counterspell, like, that's, they just, they hadn't been doing that before, but if they hit a Counterspell there, no. They had that chance. But otherwise, we're taking the rest of the turns. And then, so if you're wondering how do we win after we take all the turns, we just use um, Karn's, Karn will just makes a bunch of Karn Strucks. Like, if our opponent wants to play it out, we, you know, just ultimate our Teferi and um, 
Yeah, I can try re resetting Arena. We just, uh, yeah, Teferi ult, exile their lands, and then we can also, we just use Karn to make Karn structs and just make creatures there that the, the creatures kill, so. Karn is our win condition for the most part. I mean, Teferi also works, they, they both work. Yeah, that's a that's a nice card. Um I'm keeping this because we got the good mana, but this is basically a, a five card hand for now. You know, these these two cards aren't going to do anything until the late game, but I like our, our mana situation. We got to redraw with the Revitalize. This deck, I certainly keep some, some sketchy hands. It's a great card to draw. I'm playing three Search Roscantas in this deck because it's, it's so valuable to taking all of the turns in the game. That's another good one. What you got going on over here? Double History, Luxodon, Tribunal, Snowborn's Entry. I'm going to need mana, but we're probably going to find other lands. So taking the Venerate Luxodon because that card costs zero mana and puts a lot of power on the battlefield. The History at least costs three. Clear those up and not let them flip the Legion's Landing, because Legion's Landing would let them cast history. Let's see if we hit a land drop. That's not a land drop. So basically just looking for another Kaya's Wrath right now. Out. See if we find another Kaiser Wrath. Hmm. It's not Kaiser Wrath. We got one more turn. We need Kaiser at this turn. But even if we do find it, that Adanto, the first four, is going to be trouble. No. We need them to to wait just a little bit longer to have the double double history. I could have. I mean, I could have just let them flip Vanguard Adanto and so maybe two. Maybe I just cast that Kaiser Wrath just way too early. I could have let them have it. Hmm. This one is kind of difficult for us to actually untap with our planeswalkers in. Kind of want to play Mortifies. So there's there's a couple of schools of thought here of like we can cut the temporal sunderings and just kind of play Esper Control like we can just cut these or we can just cut cut these and just play Esper Control or we can um, 
keep them and try to have our our combo you know try to like you know keep our combo deck as good as it can be but the other option is just whoops just getting rid of all of those and just going full on esper control I think we're going to do that. We're gonna, let's go Esper Control here. Playing a couple of negates to be able to protect Lyra. Um, or just, they have a lot of spells. History, Banalia, um, Conclave, Tribunal. Like, all those kind of things later on. And I, I think I want Negate over Duress. Because if we're going a little bit later. Like, we already have the Thought Erasures. Um, but then the negates can, like, protect our things later on. Taking the three for one. Sure, I could be greedier. But taking it right now. Um, keeping the high life total. Yeah, that one that worked. Let's see if we get game three on the draw. This is gonna be the hard game. Ugh. I mean, I'm gonna keep it because of this card, I guess. And you know, we got good mana. Let's hopefully top deck a, a Kaya's Wrath or a Cry of the Carnarium, either one. It's not not bad. Yeah, sometimes all it takes is just one good cry. Cry it out. Not a sweeper. I don't want you to ferry. So the history just makes another 2 2 and then pumps them. All the knights, including the Dauntless Bodyguard, so killing that. We stand together. They should be pumping up the 2-2 two, two knight. Strength yeah, okay, they did that. I was going to say, to at least get one thing out of Cryo Carnarium range. Alright, so I'm taking lethal here. I mean, I guess I could revitalize into a cast down. Or another revitalize. My only hit. That won't do it. Good curve out for the opponent. One drop, two drop, three drop, four drop. I did not find a sweeper, and that was a good curve. One and one. Just especially history, history into a Johnny. Stuff to beat. Stuff to beat. One drop, two drop, history of Johnny. 
We did not do it. Um, I've been... I've been certainly on my... I've had my share of playing Tithe Taker, History of Johnny, and killing people with that. Can't be too mad at it. Hey, Nitty Rat. Good evening. All right, so we got Sertros Kanta in play. So that's, you know, really important in the S premiere. Wait, they took... They took Kaya's Wrath? It's interesting. So this must be Esper midrange. Sure is. Alright, there's one thief hit. At least, all right, they got rid of two lands. So they're turbo turbocharging our Ascanta, plus we don't have any, we don't have any counter spells in our deck. So we don't have to worry about like them finding our counter spells kind of thing. This is hardly my worst defeat. It's a good time for a Kaya's Wrath right here. Kaya's Wrath, uh, not quite. We can cast the Nexus next turn. I guess they may tuck this as Kanta. I know my response is not so, so fast. We cannot cast Nexus next turn. Now. I thought you were saying that I'm something was wrong with the stream. These I'm impressed. We're not out of this yet. Be so foolish as to face me. This one's not over yet. We do have to find Kaya's Wrath, of course. They put a whole lot of lands in our graveyard. And there's Kai's Wrath. Let's take another turn first. Are they playing like Negate over there? They don't usually have Negate in their deck, right? So Dovin gets the ultimate. Dovin Ultimate's not good game. We're not we're not dead yet. We can win this. Just kinda depends on what they have. We got it to fairy. We have Let's skip to the eight turn. extra turn cards. If we get lucky, we can start doing that. We can start taking extra turns. I was confident this would work. Again, I am proven right. I've been in worse spots before, though. Should have seen that coming. All right, that doesn't help us. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we're not playing Teferi this turn, that was like the one thing that we needed to do was to play Teferi the previous turn. No time for a break. Two, three, four, five. I constantly seek to innovate. So they're gonna have a bunch of like duresses, negates, that kind of stuff after sideboarding. This is a matchup that doesn't really get better for us after sideboarding. They are the, you know, they're like an anti-control Esper deck, basically. Hurry! Yeah, this is not a matchup that gets better for us. Our deck is what their deck is built to beat. We do not have any outs anymore. All right, so what am I going to be able to do here? The answer is not a whole lot. Yeah, the answer is not a whole lot. I'm just going to play a little bit of extra removal. And, you know, hope, hope things go a little better for us than what they did there. Oh, we can sneak a, a Planeswalker in and, and have it stick. Okay. So let's take the Freebooter. They play Hero Precinct 1 on turn 2. And then they play Theo Sandy on turn 3. And then we Kai's Wrath them away. A little annoying. Certainly would have been a lot easier if they didn't draw that, if they were just going to play Thieves Andy this turn, and we just wrap them away.
All right, not gonna let them get more one ones. Now I drew another removal spell. <clears throat> Dang it! Hoping they were not gonna hit the land drops and get to the ferry. Keep up the pace. Really? Ugh. This is a nightmare. We need to move quickly. Okay, here we go. Let's slow this down. Hold that thought. We definitely need more cards. I'm not not gonna waste my time tucking there to fairy and then having mine die to their one one. Definitely just need more cards. Elders are born too. We're not, even if somehow we, we win this game, quick. we're not winning this match. They got everything against us. So this is kind of awkward. Right on schedule. I can't take up to fairy because if I draw with the fairy, then it just gets discarded to Eldest Reborn. If I minus to fairy, you need to take a time out. Then to fairy dies to the one one. Example of my on your impending failure. So the fairy's gonna get shuffled back. My my best hope was that they did not do what they just did, and they just let my just left my Teferi alone, and they ticked up and tried to go to ultimate. That was that was my hope, was that they would just do that, but they didn't. They. They were not greedy, they did not try to get to ultimate. Yeah, that's not a deck I ever want to play against again. Hopefully we never get paired against that ever again. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is, I mean, the, yeah, the other thing is, our opponent was going to get a new Teferi with Eldritch Reborn anyway. So they got two just minus, and I mean, they were so far ahead. That game was going to work out really well for us if our opponent did not draw the Thought Erasure on turn two, on their turn three. And if they would have just played Thief of Sanity on turn three. The game was going to work out really well for us just to, to slam the Kaya's Wrath on four and kind of go from there. That that Thought Erasure was, was clutch. Well, it kind of looks like we're already dead. All right, not as dead. So 
So we're going to go down to six, just what's on the, the battlefield right now. Because we're taking five this turn, taking five next turn, which puts us down to eight. We have to shock uh, the following turn also for the Kaya's Wrath. And this can do the other six, so... Looks like we are dead. Only, only hope is to draw an untapped land. <laughs> yeah, we have we have certainly not been getting lucky <laughs> here. That's for sure. Okay, we got the untapped land. All right, not dead yet. We're basically dead, though. Any other haste thing, we're dead. Vire Day with the tier three sub. You are amazing. Thank you so much. Y'all, let's get a bunch of hype in the chat for Vire Day with the tier three sub. Tier 3 subs knock our sub battle countdown down 6. It goes down to 93. Well, thank you so much, Fire Day. With the Tier 3 sub, yeah, you get the foil hypo emotes. You also get a free donation deck. Well, you know, it's not really free because, you know, you get the Tier 3 sub. But that's one of the perks you get a donation deck so whenever you'd like just let me know if if there is a donation deck you would like you know you know if you want to wait till after war of the spark comes out if you have a deck idea um that you'd like to see on a stream just let me know and we'll get you going there All right, we have, we're untapping with the fairy, so we see if we can um, see if we can kind of combo off pace. here. You know, we want to sh so we shuffle the nexus of fate back in first to you know give ourselves a chance of finding it again before going with anything else. So it's basically just looking for nexus of fates and Karn's temporal sunderings. And we'll draw, because if we cast it, if we find a no Nexus, we'll play that before playing the Sundering. Okay, so let's pay the two, and then I still have six left. Yes, so pay the two. Extra turn, bounce that. Hey, what's up, Johnny Pot Pie? I am working on more emotes, yes. We are... A, we're a really long way uh, you know what? sub count wise from yet. unlocking more but I think I just wanted I had like some different ideas for other emotes that I wanted to do that were going to replace a couple oh yeah right we can I will phase you out of the time stream. Uh, Maybe I should just be activating the Ascanta first. I probably should just activate Ascanta. I, that's what I should have done. I don't. I don't think I should have even ultimated to fairy before ultimating to fairy or anything else. I should activate Ascanta. See if we find another Sundering or Nexus. We still could have lost there. Our opponent conceded, but they were not dead. Uh, if they just drew a, gr a Gruul Spellbreaker, we would have lost, because Spellbreaker has Hexproof during their turn, so we couldn't actually cast down the Spellbreaker. It... I mean, I guess I just drew another Teferi, so maybe I should have, like, a... Yeah, I would have exiled a Red Source for sure. They had two Red Sources, so I could have just played the third Teferi and exiled the other Red Source, so I guess I would have done that. So would I rather have Revitalize or Mortify? 
But so like that's what, like what our our deck can kind of do there. As you see there, like we're kind of like Esper Control, but once we like as you see there, we played to we played Kaiserath on four to Fairy on five, and then we took like the rest of the turns. Um, after that, I feel like maybe it was. I guess it was Teferi on six. Yeah. So I guess it was Kai's Wrath on four, Teferi on six, and then we took the rest of the turns after that. I feel like I should be playing Mortify, but... I kind of don't want Mortify. Like, I kind of want the re these Revitalizes. Yeah, I think I just want the Revitalizes. Oh, okay. Cool, you got... You got a deck here? Alright, um... Yeah, Kai's Wrath is just too important to get rid of. Hopefully we find more lands. We got 26 in here. Alright, cool, you got a, a Gruul Stompy. Alright, I can do that deck tomorrow. So, Gruel Stompy tomorrow. All right, I'm just going to cast down the Spellbreaker here. Sorry, other cast down when he lands. But we need to just kind of... We need to stay alive. All right. So, Gruel Stompy tomorrow. I'll just kick off the stream with that tomorrow. right now. Alright, we'll see if our opponent can kill us. If they cannot, if they, you know, if they have like, you know, if they have something that kills us here, you know, lightning strike or pump spell, another spell break or anything like that, if they don't, who knows? We're going to be taking a lot of turns. Just got to find these nexuses. Because Karn really does dig, dig pretty fast. We're starting this at 41 cards. Alright, and there's the start. Hmm. Still ticking up because I want to find Nexus before I, I cast Sundering. I just I shouldn't flip the Escanta there. There's a Nexus. So one mana short of activating as Kanta also. Nothing is ever truly lost.
One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. We get to play this and the temporal sundering. I will hurry. All right, so I can I can still play the, the uh, Nexus of Fate. Reveal. We just go untap two lands, end step, cast this. Man, we're doing it. We are, we are really doing it. Uh, it's getting choppy now. We need to move quickly. All right, we have the mana. One, two. Three, four, yeah. We have the mana to activate as Kanta first to see if we hit Nexus. And we do. So we can do that so we don't have to get that Temporal Sundering. Because remember, we have the, the Temporal Sundering in the chamber with Karn. Choice. But we're just down to like so little cards now. You know, we're at 25. All right, let's go put the next. Let's go shuffle this nexus back in first. The time has come. And there we go. We'd be able to activate as Kanta a couple times here. That game's over. So two and two. So. This is like this. So, like those two games, in particular, that second one, really shows you like the strength of, of this deck versus like regular Esper. Because, like, regular Esper is going to really, really struggle winning that game um, against, against Gruul. You know, like, Gruul aggro is pretty good against Esper. And, you know, like they have like those haste things, and, and you know, they could find like some Cinder Vines later, and, you know, get like some some burn spells or collision, collision colossus for the haste. It's like it's pretty tough to like stabilize over like the rest of the game and answer every single card that they have. But you don't have to answer all the cards because all you have to do is just like we have just played Kai's Wrath on four, we played Karn on five. Our opponent didn't; they had five power on the battlefield. They couldn't kill Karn. They just attacked us for five, put us down to like where we're dead to basically everything. But then after, since we got to untap on turn five, though, on our turn six, Sundering, and then Sundering, and then Sundering. And then by that time, we, we found Nexus of Fate. And, you know, after that, then, you know, we started playing, like, Teferis and more Nexus of Fates and, and so on, and then they just they just don't get another turn. So, like, we have, we have like, the ability to just stay alive. You know, we had our, our cast down early, yeah, like our turn turn two and turn three were just search for his Kanta, cast down. Those are our turn two and turn threes. And then Kaya's Wrath on four. And Karn just meant end of, end of the rest of the game. So um, Yeah, that's like what our what our deck can do and what its strength is over other uh, over regular Esper control is you, you have the ability to slow down the opponent there but then you can just take over and basically combo off we're like a combo control deck all right so we're two and two right now with the deck so yeah comparing it to bant turns bant turns has the same kind of combo finish but they don't have the interaction and removal early on in the game like, they don't have the Kaya's Wraths. They don't have Thought Erasure. Um, they can use, like, Chemster's Insight for card advantage as opposed to the Planeswalkers. But I like I like having the Sweepers and the, the Discard Spells and and the Removal and, and so on. Yeah, then yeah, exactly. When you're playing against control, our like having eight planeswalkers is just really good in in Esper control mirrors because the planeswalkers can just take over. Mono blue, of course, is tough. 
Kind of like Mono White. We have to have our opponent stumble to win, like against the the aggro decks, because we are we are a little slower. We need our opponents to stumble. If they stumble, we can win. If they don't, we're not going to be winning. So Kaya's Wrath is like definitely really important for us. I feel I don't know. I feel like if I you know, we play it here, it could get spell pierced. They did have spell pierce. Another spell pierce and a retort. Well it's easier to play around. It's easier to play around the spell pierce than it is to play around the retort. I don't want to just throw this to fairy out there to trade with the spell pier since we have a backup. Wow. Why why does that resolve? You'll thank me later. Let's skip to the good part. I don't know. I don't I don't know why that resolved. Do they have more? Like, is that other card also a counter spell? Okay, it's an opt. So we get to cast this Thought Erasure and Nexus of Fate this turn. It's like if Spell Pierce is their only thing, we just take the Spell Pierce. And then cast Nexus of Fate if it's not, you know, we get to kind of see. We could also just have, we had the ability to have 9 mana, so we could have Nexus of Fate while paying for Spell Pierce. That was another option. So I think Mono Blue is one where we want to take out the combo. And kind of want all of these things. I know the planeswalkers aren't aren't very good, and they they get countered really easily. But we kind of need them. I don't know. Maybe I just keep. Temporal Sunderings and Nexus of Fates. Nah. So hopefully with uh, Duresses and Negates and Thought Erasures, with all of those, we can resolve a Planeswalker. Because without without being able to resolve a Planeswalker, they're just going to have more gas than us, because they have a lot more spells than we do. We have a lot more lands. Yeah, without Curious Obsession, definitely makes the game a whole lot easier. Like like I was saying before, we, we don't really beat their really good hands most of the time, so we need to... We certainly need our opponent to stumble.
I'm gonna take the Trout, of course, that can be a two for one. And let's get Ascanta in play. So that can be a two for one for us. Please, no Curious Obsession. Dive down. That's rude. I don't know. I probably should not have kept the second negate. Need more lands. I want I want to be able to play Kaya's Wrath um, with Negate backup. So that's going to take two turns. So we're going to take a hit for four here, down to seven, and then another hit for four, down to three. Uh, I'll keep that though. Resolve? No. I at least got that out of their hand. So we have to hit a land drop here. Perfect. Now we'll see if they have Spell Pierce also. Alright, still alive. For a little bit. Salamander Drake has one, two, three, four, five, six instants and sorceries. <laughs> so that's game. I guess Cry the Carnarium. Yeah, because they don't have they only have six, so Cry the Carnarium. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, I got really punished for keeping that second negate. Got really punished there for keeping that second negate. Did not need to. That's a game we'd want to win with how slow they were and how much the, you know like they stumbled. They had a couple of really good draws, a particular the Charter Course. After we duressed away a Charter Course, um, you know, help them refill. All right, Mike says I'm building Esper Legends, but I don't have Dovin and the two Kayas. Would Disinformation Campaign be a good substitute in that slot? Would you recommend something else? Yeah, I'd I'd recommend something else. You're not really playing Surveil stuff to pick Disinformation Campaign back up. Um, I would I would just rather have like you could have like Mortify or Cast Down, um, or you could just play some more uh, other Legends. Like you can play like Rona, um, for example. 
But disinformation campaign does, you know, it gets it gets exiled by your own Urza's Ruinous Blast, for example. Oh yeah, Kaya's new enchantment is is perfect. Yeah, Oath of Kaya is is awesome. I'm gonna be playing a lot of that card probably. That's perfect for Esper Legends and other things like that. I think I have to get the two for one off Cry of the Carnarium. Even though it's going to mean. Waiting two turns. I don't think I needed to shock last turn. With the duress, or or even just either, I think I maybe just should have just not shocked past the turn. No, I don't like black blade at all. I don't like cards that are not good on their own. And it's not. I would just rather have another creature basically all the time than a black blade. All right, come on, land. Come on, land. Ugh. Karn helps you get lands. So they have three instants over there. So Terminator would cost five to adapt. You don't have to worry about that yet. We just hope they, out of those two cards, they don't have another counter spell. Wow. Okay. They're going all in. That was an all-in kind of move there. Well chosen. So we'll just cry away three creatures and then cat and cast down the the gin and we're looking good. Hey Branch Walker. We're playing some Esper taking turns. This game's looking great for us. Looks like we're about to be about to be three and two. Hopefully, we'll see. I guess we're a long ways away from actually winning the game, so we'll see if something. Um, 
Something unexpected happens. Decisive action is needed. I'm gonna be tucking there as Kanta. Right? I guess if I tuck as Kanta, I don't have an answer for this Tempest Gen right now, no. Right now, no. But I'll probably find something. It's not gonna kill us in one hit. It could kill the Teferi. But we can find something. Told you, you could find something. Keep up the pace. I don't really want to cast Thought Erasure right now. I think I'd rather hold up Negate. Oh, right. You get to untap the two lands anyway, so I could have just grabbed Thought Erasure and looked to see what their other card was. All right, three and two. Let's see, it's 4.30 right now. Let's play one more match with, with our deck here. We'll play one more match, see if we get... <clears throat> see if we go back to break, ev break even or if we get to the 4-2. Are you thinking about how a, or are you thinking how a Simic Profilerate deck would be like? No, I haven't really thought about a Simic Proliferate deck. I'm not expect. I'm not really expecting Proliferate to be like a a mechanic people build around in Standard. You know, obviously I could be wrong there, but just like first thought, not really expecting that to happen. Yeah, absolutely. All you have to do is um, any of these exclamation point get there. So yeah, movement, you know, has these awesome watches. You get 15% off your purchase there with through the referral link. They also have really cool sunglasses. So yeah, check them out. Okay, well, we have been getting paired against a lot of aggro, you know, a lot of monocolored aggro decks, which is not really what we want to be facing. This is this is not what we want to be facing. Mono red, mono white, mono blue. We want to be facing the mid range decks because we go over the the top of mid range decks pretty well. Like our our decks real good against Sultai, for example. Or even just other control decks. I actually like facing control mirrors with this deck because of the eight planeswalkers. <sighs> and Nexa Fate's good in control mirrors for sure, also. So I guess I take a light up the stage. This is going to be a lot of damage, though. Like, Light of the Stage is probably worth more than a Wizard's Lightning, right? I don't know. Wizard's Lightning is a lot of damage for, you know, three damage for one mana. It's possible their stage is just a couple more lands, maybe. I don't know. So this is three, six. Uh, this is just... This is rough. Paul says proliferate is going to be huge. That was a very naive comment. The thing about proliferate is you do have to have, you know, like that's kind of expecting um, a lot of, like you having like multiple permanents and everything in play. It's not, in standard, it's not that easy just to have a bunch of things to proliferate. All right, we need to find Kaya's Wrath. Usually when you have a, a deep board state, it, you're already doing okay. Maybe I should have just taken the Wizard's Lightning. So you say like Bolas plus Proliferate win? I mean, Bolas is just kind of win. Bolas is just... 
really strong. All right, all 15 come in here. Hmm. But yeah, so if you're saying it's just for super friends, but like if you're if you're playing a super friends deck, if you have if you have multiple planeswalkers in play, you're going to be winning. That's what I'm saying. You don't need to proliferate multiple planeswalkers. Like you're already you're already winning when you have multiple planeswalkers in play. When you're playing a deck like Super Friends, it's it's things like what happened like that game. Like before you play your planeswalkers, you're just dead. You know, like proliferate doesn't help there. So how am I winning this game, for example? Like we are, if I go with this, if I go this route, we are really, really slow. We can just have more time to draw more burn spells. How is this different from mono blue? What did I, what else did I take out against mono blue? Why does it say 64? Oh, I think I... Did I cut Revitalize against Mono Blue? I guess I did. Yeah, we could add four, four Moment of Cravings to the sideboard. That just takes up so many sideboard slots. That's just... It's just so many sideboard slots to do that. I got rid of Thought Erasure instead of Duress. So basically, we don't we don't really need eight discard spells, right? Because like later on, like the game's gonna go later uh, after they empty their hand, the discard spells aren't gonna be doing anything. But I, I got rid of Thought Erasure instead of Duress because of the the two mana instead of one. Uh, I feel like I really want the one mana card there. A lot of creatures. I battle for the forces of good. They're doing a good job of playing around Cry of the Carnarium. The choices we make reveal who we are. Give me the land, please. Dang it. Need that land. So if I cast down, I'm just going to cast down the Chain Whirler. I could cast down the Phoenix to be able to cry the Carnarium like the next turn, but I'm just going to be playing this Dawnbringer here the next turn. You may regret that choice. Phoenix is really good against me.
I'm gonna have to like set up a turn of like Kaya's Wrath plus Cry of the Carnarium to get rid of those. I don't know, I, I kind of feel like in this matchup that I should just be... Like, maybe I should just keep all the extra turn stuff and just try to have the hands like how we had against the, the green-red deck where, you know, we played Kai's Wrath on four, Karn on five, and then took the rest of the turns. You know, we had a we had a good hand there. Like, maybe we, we are supposed to be doing that. Here. All right, so I'm going to use Karn to grab a cast down... Cast down a Phoenix. Yeah, this this actually should work out really well for us. Yeah, this this is great for us. They get two damage in after we gain life, but both their Phoenixes are going to be gone now. Because we have we have a cast down we can grab with Karn. What we have over here that's five, six. Um, I mean, I do want that. What was lost is now returned. I know we don't have the negate available this turn, but negates are gonna stop like the only way our opponents have to get to get back in this. Um Yeah, Phoenix is a is trouble. I don't really have like contempts and stuff like that. That game went really, really well for us. I'm not expecting to win this game three. But they are a low land count red deck, like sometimes you know, sometimes they stumble and have to mulligan a bunch and things like that. But if they have like one of their best hands, we're not winning. Yeah, power level of, of war does look really, really high. And Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance were already pretty high power level, in my opinion. Like they were already really good sets. And this looks pretty high. And and honestly, it's it's kind of exciting. Um, I'm. I think it's better. I think standard is better when you have a really wide variety of cards to play, you know, when it's not just like, like before, because like Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance did open up the format a lot because they added in so many good cards. But before that, it was kind of just like play Scarab God or Teferi and that's it, you know, kind of stuff. And, and um, I think it is good when there is just a lot of good cards. So, you know, it's not just like the same the same cards you have to play all the time. Hmm. So if I if I don't cast down this right now, this attacks for four next turn. So that's four, five, six. So I'd go down to eight. The problem if there's like a Phoenix. I guess I'm cast downing. I really hope there's not a Phoenix. I, I feel like just using a card to save for life is, is important. We don't need to worry about like exactly how many cards. All right, that worked. That worked. If 
you show remorse, I'll show restraint. You need to slow down. Yeah, they can kill Teferi here, but they're killing Teferi, they're not killing me. We will meet again. No. This isn't a fight you can win. Hmm. That would be nice to draw a black source to be able to dress here also, but... Oh well. Could have just arrest plus as Kanta. Could have just done that. That's really bad. Ugh. We need to find the gates. We need to find the gates. You know what? I'm not done yet. And overall, we're pretty dead. I've not found a gates. Okay, okay. It's a card. Keep up the pace. Allow me to introduce All right, we're dead to different creatures. Dang. So close. So close. Died to a monkey. We sure did. Very close. Good fight. Yep. Our opponent really went really, really creature heavy there. It's, you know, kind of interesting with like the rekindling phoenixes and Legion War bosses and, and everything like that. Um. Alright, so 3 3. You know, we went we went one two against the hyper aggro decks, the monocolored aggro decks. So those are those are going to be kind of tough matchups for us. Uh, like the yeah, and then went two one against other ones. Um, that kind of sounds like about right. Um, I guess we could do one more to break the tie. I I was planning on that being the last match. Here with Esper taking turns, but we're still a little under two hours with the deck. I guess we could do one more. Yeah, we'll do one more to break the tie. That sounds... That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Even though... I guess this would be bad if we pick up a loss, because then we'll move... We'll end up moving down in rank over the seven games. Naya will have... So we'll have Naya right up next. We're going to do... One more, Jackson. Nope, no absorb in the deck. That's not really... We don't really have room for it. Yeah, War of the Spark review on Friday. Good opening hand. Let's hopefully not play against, like, you know, hyper aggro deck where we could ac actually do our stuff. I don't really like seeing Stomping Ground, though. These green-red decks are usually pretty difficult for Esper to stop all of their creatures all the time. But that's what our, our combo 
This is what our combo finish is uh, built to be good against. Mono black zombies. That looks fun. Can have that on the docket for tomorrow. Hey, what's up, Dirk? No Phoenix, please. I like the no land drop. That's good for us. Yeah. Yeah, well. Actually, I'm not sure. Let me see if I can check here real quick. Dang it. They have a phoenix. It says that... No, it says that I get credit for whenever you use the promo code. Ah, uh, coupon code not accepted on items already marked off. Gotcha. Well, Varchild, um, send me your order number, and I will send that to my representative, and they should give me credit for that. They will likely give me credit for that. Because they've they've been really good about um, about that so far, like just giving them order number. Yeah, we are one hundred percent dead. Yeah, rekindling Phoenix in particular is really, really difficult for me to deal with. All these haste creatures. Bleh. Bleh, I tell you. I don't really have anything else to take out besides revitalize. Revitalize isn't isn't really that bad. But I want to I want to keep all the all eight planeswalkers and all eight extra turn spells. I think that's our best chance of winning. I could see not playing Lyra Dawnbringer. I could see Lyra just kind of turning on like Collision Colossus kind of thing. Oh well, no, we're gonna try it though. And I think it's I think. Thought Erasure is better than Revitalize. Uh, no, no theory crafting or deck building on Friday. Mostly just kind of talking about the cards and, and going through all the cards in the set. Um, I have been considering another stream for next week before, before it releases uh, to do like a deck building stream where we make War of the Spark decks.
I'm not exactly sure how how that stream would work from a practical standpoint of like how we won't have like arena to really build the decks. Like we can kind of build decks on arena, but then use like proxies of like other cards in standard for the War of the Spark cards kind of thing. It would be nice if, if at least the cards were just kind of like there on the on the program. So just doing this, we draw our land. Dang it. If we draw the land, we're just going going Karn, looking for more lands. I think we win this game if we hit that land drop. Um, I'm not sure if we win this now. We certainly need a land here. Man, last game we had so many lands. Uh, well, this is a disappointing end to this deck here. I played a whole lot better yesterday when I was playing it off stream. Did not go our way today, though. They're sitting on three lands also, so just like seven spells that we're just not going to be able to beat. And there's the land, way too late. So three, four. Ugh. I know this isn't like everybody's favorite deck to watch and stuff, but I had just been doing so well with it that I wanted to play it on stream, and then, you know, we have this showing. It's disappointing, but oh well. What are you going to do? All right, so that's us for taking turns. Uh, went three and four with it. Uh, played against a lot of... We played against uh, five, five of the seven matchups. At least five we know are, are just like... Kind of bad, yeah, like just basically pretty bad matchups. Decks that are like going to be, yeah. We played like five bad matchups with five aggro decks. Or no, six. Six. Yeah, we had six bad matchups there. Hey, there you go. We had somebody supporting with movement. There, I think that's Var Child. Thank you so much. And looks like it counts then. Because, yeah, that movement notification popped up there. Perfect. Yeah, I'll be playing that one again, Phony. The Esper Legends. Yeah, I'll be playing that one again for sure. Yeah, so we played three monocolored aggro decks, the two green-red aggros, you know, with, like, their haste creatures and, and stuff. And then also that, that Esper midrange, which is, like, basically built to beat control, how they have, like, the main deck, uh, all those main deck cards that are only good against control with, like, uh, Kite Sail Freebooters and... Uh, Deputy Tensions, Thief of Sandies, all the discard spells, counter magic. We did play against like six matchups that are not so good. <laughs> we didn't play against other con mid range and control decks. Our our deck is like you know real good against mid range and control, and those are not the matchups we were facing, <laughs> unfortunately. When I was playing it off stream, that's what I was facing. I was playing against a bunch of like Sultai and control and and Nexus and mid, you know, mid-range and control decks, and I was doing really well with it. Um, but oh well. All right, so that's that's us for taking turns. Um, if you have a lot of mid-range and control in your metagame, uh, this is a really good option. But it doesn't have as much defense for the aggro deck. So it's your aggro decks that are trying to get underneath like traditional Esper control. This is going to struggle with more than that. But it does go over the top of other control decks and mid-range decks pretty easily. So if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, 